We're getting closer and closer to 1015, and Augmentation Evoker is looking like it could be the buff class that we've always wanted for years in everybody that called out for a bard. But is it good though? Is it ready? <laughs> does it work properly? And how does it feel to actually play it? That's what we're gonna be exploring today, and this video is kind of my experience playing augmentation on the PTR and, you know, putting it through the lens of somebody that plays all the specs in the game that main the Voker in the first patch of Dragonflight, so I kind of have a rough idea of how it might feel. Of course, this could always change with the numbers and all of that, of course, a disclaimer, but the experience that I had with augmentation was a little bit meh. Now, let's talk about why was it meh and what could potentially be made to make it better. First off, we're gonna start with a little bit of a breakdown of how the spec works. Although we covered this in a previous video, we didn't go super in depth and I don't wanna bore you with all the nitpicky stuff, but give you a general idea if you haven't seen the augmentation spec yet in action or have read anything about it. Augmentation Evoker is basically the third spec of your Evoker and it does a couple of things. Its main role is to buff the party slash raid, but mostly the party since most buffs will cover a very restrictive number of people. Your most important buff, the first spell that you unlock through your talents is Ebon Might. What Ebon Might does, it's a 1.5 second cast time with a 30 second cooldown and it increases the main stat of four nearby allies by 10% of your own, which on the PTR with a 420 something eye level evoker, actually was a 415 because we were item level scaled, yep, I remember now, it was about 1400 main stat. 1400 main stat is quite a bit. It's a lot of main stat to have in from one particular source, although we don't know exactly how much that is, and I'll get to that in a second. Now you put this up on your party and it lasts for 10 seconds with a 30 second cooldown, meaning that normally you only have about 33% uptime on it, but you can actually extend its uptime with a couple of spells, particularly upheaval and eruption. Eruption is basically your basic spell that costs three essence and what it does is it causes a violent eruption beneath an enemy feet dealing a lot of damage volcanic damage and split between nearby enemies with the split bit it turns it into a little bit of a weaker spell in terms of damage output and overall the damage output is something that we're going to talk about in a minute and this is fine but this is the only essence consumer and you are a dps spec and we go back to devastation that has pyre and disintegrate the devs have made a pretty good way of making eruption viable in both single target and aoe because it does more damage if there's one target and obviously it splits if it's an aoe but it is only one consumer and it does have a cast again we'll get to that in a second and with upheaval is basically something that you unlock later down into the talent tree on the left which is your charged ability your empowered ability and this does a lot of damage and extends Ebon Might by 2 seconds no matter how many charges you get, which is something that we'll probably talk about in a second. And charging it more just increases the radius because this knocks stuff up. This is pretty cool, you have access to a fundamental knock-up effect as your default rotation on a 40 second cooldown. It is 40 second cooldown. Now the second way, major way to buff your allies is with Prescience. Prescience is a talent really down low at the bright part of the talent tree. With a 12 second cooldown, you pop this and an ally gets 3% increased critical strike chance for 20 seconds. Now, if you don't have an ally selected, this will go on a random person, meaning that you probably would like to figure out exactly who you press. This would probably be the equivalent of power infusion. You might want to put this up on the ally that would benefit the most. It is only 3% crit, but it does add up. And if you don't select an ally, it just goes on one of your nearest uh, damage dealers. This can furthermore be augmented by the Capstone Fate Mirror, which is something that I did play with and something that has been theorycrafted to be probably set in stone for your starter build. Fate Mirror makes Prescience grant an ally a chance for their spells and abilities to echo their damage or healing, dealing 15% of the amount gained. So this is kind of like an extra extra shot of that same amount of damage. Remember multi-strike, it kind of feels something like that, which is okay. It feels a little bit underwhelming as a capstone, but hey, sure. The third way to buff allies is through blistering scales, which is specifically aimed at tanks. Blistering scales is a 30 second cooldown cast spell that lasts for one minute, and this puts a buff on your target, ideally the tank, to give them 30% armor, and it has 15 explosive dragon scale charges. Once the tank is hit, those charges explode and they deal AoE damage. 
The charges are basically triggered by melee attacks, so realistically you'll only want this on your tank, and you can only have this up on one target at a time. This normally is supposed to target tanks, but sometimes it's casted on you, so make sure, unless they fix this, make sure that you have your tank selected before you pop this. And from what we can tell so far, this is associated as damage dealt by your tank, meaning that it will contribute to that tank's threat generation, which is ideal because you don't want to bring up threat from you but then the game definitely considers this as something that the tank does and your add-ons will reflect that as well meaning that you won't see this on your damage meter which is not particularly important anywhere she perform until we talk about it in a second really close to blistering scales you have timelessness which makes you enchant an ally to appear out of sync with the normal flow of time. Pretty cool. <laughs> but it reduces their threat generation by 30% for 30 minutes. It's like the old buffs that last for a long time. You just put it on a target that just deals a lot of threat. This is very niche, very, very utility focused, very cool. I imagine as a tank myself, there are, there's always that red paladin or havoc demon hunter or arms warrior that just blasts at the beginning of a pack in dungeons and pulls aggro off of me. Obviously putting that on that person will essentially generate a lot less threat and that's not gonna be an issue. Very niche, very specific, not useful all the time. And the next one is Bestow Wern Stone, a one minute cooldown, kind of like a hellstone item that you conjure and you give one to your party ally, whoever. And when one of you guys uses the Wern Stone, you teleport to the other person, uh, wherever they are. This is really cool. This is a unique utility option, again, that works really well. I can imagine this being amazing in raids, where you have to move from one platform to the other, that person is too far away, or that platform is too far away, and you can just teleport to that person and kind of game the mechanics of the fight, which is actually a really cool thing. And there are a lot of other passives through the talents that will make you feel impactful for your team. And that's essentially how the buffing works. Main buffs that you will use to give other people damage is Ebon Might and Prescient, and that's pretty much it. The part of you dealing damage is essentially kind of basic. You cast Living Flames in single target or Azure Strike in AoE, they can proc Essence Burst, and you have Fire Breath still as all Evoker specs. And you have Eruption and Upheaval that we talked about when it comes to buffing and Deep Breath unless you take Breath of the Eons, which is a talent and replaces Deep Breath with a 2 minute cooldown. And this is kind of how the spec will work right now unless more testing and more theory crafting, more talents are going to be added because we know that even Devastation have had some really nice changes and Preservation have had really nice changes throughout the course of Dragonfly. I don't know when these changes will happen for Augmentation because they do have to happen and here's why. First of all, when it comes to the pros and cons, because this is something that we wanted to mention in this video, there are a bunch of really cool pros. Obviously, it's an interesting playstyle. You're essentially buffing your party, and that's a really cool thing to do because that is your role. You have niche options to buff your party members, obviously through increasing their damage output, or through the niche utility options to traverse zones, to give them specific interactions with the combat, either reducing their threats, swapping their position, you'll still have the evoker stuff, you know, rescue and all of that good things. Through the draconic attunement, whether it's black or bronze, obviously they buff your party in different ways. That is really cool. Not to mention that the animations for this are amazing. Upheaval is probably the coolest looking spell that we have today. Seeing the earth pile underneath the target and just blast all the targets in the air is very, very fun. Other than that, it feels like a much, much simpler, much weaker, less fast uh, devastation spec, which doesn't really say much for Evoker as a class, something that was supposed to sell the expansion, something that was supposed to be the poster child of the expansion. And this is where I start to personally have some problems with it. Again, this could be my opinion, but this is what I figured out after playing a couple of hours on the PTR doing the mega dungeon as well and figure out exactly what things are. First of all, the role of buffing your party outside of Ebon Might and Prescience is almost non-existing. It seems useless and becomes very monotone in terms of the play style. You buff your party and you just keep up Ebon Might trying to extend it as much as possible, which is just keeping up a buff on the target. So you're not going to be able to have 100% uptime. And when the buff runs out, you hit a really awkward moment where you feel turbo useless because your damage is low. It's very low. Obviously, numbers can change, but so far they haven't changed over the course of a month of beta i don't know if they're looking to improve this or not i don't know if it's necessary for you to have more damage and this is another problem as well how much are you actually contributing to the party there's no real way to tell blistering scales for instance shows up on your tank's damage meter which i guess you can tell that 
but Evan Might is pretty hard to gauge since it, you cannot really tell how much you're contributing because your party members just do a little bit more damage. How much more damage? Well, the only real way to know is by doing the exact same content with the exact same people without you buffing them to kind of figure out. That's not a way for you as a damage dealer to feel if your contribution is impactful or not, considering that your damage is maybe just a little bit above the tanks right now. Maybe that can change. So this is a feeling that people should definitely have when playing a damage dealer in World of Warcraft. It's part of why the combat is so fun. Feeling that what you do matters or feeling that you can tell that what you're doing does things. Outside of a little bit of damage through your spells and some knock-up effects from your upheaval, there's not much you do. Not to mention, you don't really have a DPS cooldown. Your Breath of the Eons replaces the Breath and you don't have a Dragon Rage style DPS cooldown. Maybe you're supposed to have that in Time Skip, which, okay, fair, but Time Skip is boring. What it does, it just reduces the cooldown. It doesn't do something new, it just makes you do the same things more often. Which, that's a cool mechanic, but that's not very World of Warcrafty. I'm playing a Destruction Warlock on live. I pop an Infernal, slams into the ground, it deals damage, generates shards. I see my Infernal wreck havoc on the screen. I don't really know what time skip does. It feels like I'm getting cooldowns faster and that's great. Not to mention that if you do play the build that so far seems to be theory crafted as being the best build performing as of now, you will replace time skip with the capstone underneath it, interwoven threads, which makes it a passive cooldown reduction on your spells, so it's no longer even a button that you press. And that feels a little bit boring, I'm not gonna lie. This is supposed to be the spec that's going to bring a lot of love to evokers, and it doesn't feel as awesome as it probably is as a concept. It feels like the concept is a lot more awesome than the actual execution of the spec. On the topic of buffing targets, Eruption is very clunky as the only essence consumer with a cast time, which is very important to maintain Ebon Might because you do have to maintain Ebon Might and you get Essence Burst sometimes and sometimes it feels like you're not consuming them enough because it's not instant cast. I'm thinking that maybe Essence Burst can make this instant cast since it feels very, very antiquated to have this, or outdated rather, to have this as a cast time and be stuck in a place to constantly cast this about six to seven consecutive times because that's all you do. Once you pop Ebon Might, you want to fit in as many of these casts as possible because you cannot maintain 100% uptime on Ebon Might and you want to maintain ideally as close to 100% as possible, you'll end up casting these back to 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 back, which becomes very boring very quick. You will essentially put in an upheaval every now and again and this also signifies the issue with these because this is an empowered spell that extends the duration of Ebon Might, but the more you channel it, the more you lose that time of extending Ebon Might because you spend more time casting this for no additional extension on the buff. I hope that they actually introduce a way where depending on how many charges this has, it extends it by a little bit more so you don't feel like you're wasting Ebon Might uptime by trying to have a bigger upheaval to knock back or hit more and more enemies. I don't feel like that's a significant trade-off considering that your damage is still gonna be very poor and the only real way that you're feeling like you're contributing is by keeping Ebon Might up as much as possible. So I feel like there should be more interactions with Ebon Might and hopefully keeping it up 100% uptime or as close to it because once it's gone, you just feel very awkward. Once again, your damage is just very poop. There's not much you do otherwise to buff targets. Prescience is very passive. It just goes randomly. It's 3% crit. You don't really feel it. It's like pressing arcane intellect every now and again. That's not particularly interesting. Sure, there are some really, 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 really niche interactions, but they're all pretty passive. And outside of anachronism, which makes prescience have a 35% chance to grant essence burst, this doesn't really feel like anything. And 35% chance is just a little bit boring. It's not like we're overly extending Ebon Might. I think that maybe they should just make this 100% guaranteed. Once you press Prescience, you get an Essence Burst as well. And making that Eruption instant might make this even more engaging and more fun. Overall, the concept of Augmentation feels fun. It's, it's a cool concept. But once you get to play it quite a little bit, it becomes a little bit boring. There are no exciting moments in your rotation because you don't really have an awesome cooldown. Sure, Breath of Eons is cool, 
but you lose deep breath for it. Maybe let us keep both deep breath and breath of eons and maybe that would be a little bit cool. You fly around a little bit more, you breathe a little bit more. That's a fun thing to do as an evoker and I feel like that would go a long way into making this better. And since complaining for the sake of complaining is not particularly productive, I think that Essence Burst should make Eruption Instant Cast. And I feel that if you do end up overcasting or empowering upheaval more, it should, for I don't know, for each extra charge, extend Ebon Might by one extra second, I think. And last thing, maybe make all of these really, really actually cool interactions with the Wernstone, with the Threat Reduction, with the giving healers extra range and able to cast while moving through Spatial Paradox, which I don't know if I mentioned yet. Spatial Paradox is also an ability that you can get which is a combination of Spirit Walker's Grace and give more range to a close healer or to one of your healers. Because this only affects essentially one other healer. This is cool, but it's also super, 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 super niche. What are the chances, because this is obviously a raid ability, what are the chances that putting this on a healer is going to mean a lot? And how often are you going to use this? Are you going to use this every two minutes? Maybe casting while moving is going to be efficient, but then you're more and more delegated to this. Okay, Evoker X handles that Priest X because this is, was kind of my experience in the raid, which is not a bad experience, but I had to babysit. This is essentially a babysit class. You're in charge of rescuing somebody, of popping movement, of spatial paradoxing that person, prescience that other person, boosting skills that tank, which I guess it's cool, but these don't really do much for your contribution to the party to make you feel like it matters because they're slightly underwhelming and they don't contribute to your damage that much and you are a damage there at the end. If this was a healer, that would be fine, right? You are delegating yourself to full support, but outside of buffing people, your performance is low and once you're outside of a group, these buffs don't really matter that much because 10% more max stat doesn't contribute to the fact that you're doing almost half of the damage of everybody else. That's not gonna... It's not gonna help. So maybe this is just my first impressions. I hope that I end up being wrong because the concept is really cool, but it gets a little bit boring. Maybe that's just me. I don't know if you've had the chance to play augmentation or if you plan on playing my augmentation, don't let this discourage you, but keep in mind that there are some pros and cons. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, patrons, for supporting the content. Love you guys and listen to your viewer. If you want to support us a little bit more, consider checking our Patreon page down below. It definitely helps us make more content like this in the future. Thank you for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye! I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.